Okay. So we are here and uh, we started the recording as well. Uh, we studied uh, we studied uh, syllogism and uh, we studied paradoxes, dilemmas, and pathologies in the last class. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'll uh, I'll put a, a card on this video here so that you can see it. Uh, uh, then we can move forward to our next topic. Uh, we have uh, about uh, four or five main topics left and uh, some small topics. So uh, let's start with the topic, uh, something that is very important for the whole of uh, the studies of logic and expression and, and all of this. Thing. I don't think you've studied that before, uh, so let's do that. Whenever we are talking about uh, uh, making an argument. We remember that we studied the type of argument that we can make a deductive argument or an inductive argument or an abductive argument. And they are different in the sense that inductive argument gives uh, irrefutable ground for the truth of its conclusion, while an inductive argument gives probable ground for the truth of its conclusion. And uh, in case of the abductive, it is only uh, a fair uh, guess of what has happened in the past about something or what has happened, what might be true about something uh, that uh, for which we have a specific case in front of us. So all of these arguments are different in making a certain type of argument and then we studied syllogism which is a kind of deductive argument. So um, when we studied that we also have to know that when we switch these different arguments then we uh, have a complete um, a main uh, text that is uh, uh, that is what we want to do. For example we are writing an essay then uh, our essay is mainly consisting of many arguments stitched with each other. We start with an introduction, we, start, we then have a body and then we have a conclusion. So all of these things uh, can be done in a different way. Let's take an essay. So an essay can be written in two ways. Uh, the first way is this that you start introduction with talking about something. Uh, uh, what it is, how it is, where it is, and give some uh, facts and figures that any, everybody can agree to, right? Uh, for example, I start my essay on, uh, on um, let's say, coronavirus. So, uh, I start my essay on coronavirus by starting by saying that coronavirus is a virus that started originated in China in in uh, December and uh, in uh, December 19 and they are it is highly infectious and this happened and that happened and these many people have have been infected by it so all of these things people will agree to and then I will say therefore it is a global pandemic so when I say that if that these many people are there, it is there in 200 countries, and therefore it is a global pandemic. First, then then I have established that it's a global pandemic. Then I say since it is a global pandemic, then we need to make some changes in our lifestyle to tackle it. That's another argument. Then what kind of changes should we have in our uh, in our life? So that we actually uh, deal with this situation, and how do we actually counter this exam, counter this uh, situation with our not just how we change our lifestyle, but also how we change our perspective of things. So, from starting with what coronavirus is to how we should change our perspective, this argument is bridged in in 
different words. If you've seen my text uh, that I've uh, sent on uh, the main university, uh, official university page of the Facebook page, then you might see those arguments in place. If you haven't, then I will share it with you. So, um, so one by one we make these arguments and get to the point that uh, where, where we actually establish the main crux of what we are trying to say. This is one way to do it. But this is not the always the case. We can have a very different approach of writing an essay. You are able to hear me, right? And if everybody can hear me, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, uh, the other approach to writing an essay is not this that we start with something uh, that uh, that is about the whole of uh, whatever is going on. Instead, we start off with a specific case, which means we are going with the inductive argument. This was the deductive argument because we started with something that people already know a premise that everybody can agree to. So we provide irrefutable ground for our uh, conclusion, our main conclusion. Uh, but in the inductive argument, we actually start with something which is specific, a case. Uh, for example, we studied in the case of uh, inductive argument that uh, all the beans in this bag are white. These beans are from this bag. So these beans are white. Which means that these, this is a very, this is a deductive argument because all the beans in the bag are white. This is, these are the beans from this bag. So these beans are white obviously. Uh, but an inductive argument uh, is different because it starts with a case, a simple case. For example, these beans are uh, white and uh, these beans are from this bag. So therefore we say that all of the beans in the bag are white. We make a general conclusion based on specific observation. These beans are white, therefore, and uh, these beans are from this bag, so this happens. Uh, when you're writing about coronavirus, let's talk about that. So I say that there is a particular person, I start off with this, that um, uh, Muhammad Abbas, age 23, is a, uh, is a person living in Karachi who lives from, uh, on daily wages and goes every day for work as a painter and works and stays at uh, roundabout and, and looks for work and, and that's how he lives his daily life. And he doesn't save enough for the next day. So in this uh, coronavirus scenario, he is not getting any uh, work because of the lockdown and therefore he has nothing to uh, eat or uh, give to his family. So this is a particular case and I start off with this and then I say that this is a problem for not just uh, our people are uh, uh, the, the ones who are living on daily with this but also a food for thought for all the people who are living uh, uh, an easy life. The question is this that uh, are we living a life are we living in a system that is benefiting everybody or just a few people? Is it so that we need to change the system so that it's in, uh, in, in these circumstances, everybody can be safe, everybody can be uh, trouble free as we are right now in our home. So that change of perspective can be drawn from this uh, first uh, a premise that one simple case, I say that this is a case and then I say that this person is not alone, there are many people like them. And therefore, uh, all 
ऑफ द कंट्री शुड बी कंसर्न अबाउट दिस तो वॉट आई जस्ट सेड दैट मोहम्मद अब्बास इज अ पुअर गाय एंड देर आर मेनी पुअर गाइज लाइक हिम देर फोर द कंट्री इज फुल ऑफ पुअर पीपल हु आर हु आर हैविंग अ ट्रबल बिग ट्रबल इन लॉकडाउन so what i've done is the same thing i have just changed the name from these beans are white uh these beans are white ko maine kar diya mohammad abbas uh these beans are from this guy mohammad abbas belongs to pakistan where there are other people like him therefore the whole country is full of these people who are going to have uh, difficulties in lockdown all of the beans in the diagram right so you understand the inductive process of making an argument uh if you get to this result yeah sir ye to invalid argument ho jayega na sir it's not invalid because uh i'm taking a case and i am saying that it is not alone there are many people like him not all but it's very probable that a lot of people are like him and therefore uh it it is a problem worth considering it is a valid argument because the conclusion follows the premise okay and uh, and but it's an inductive argument not a deductive one which means that just because omar the bus is not getting money for his family doesn't mean that not everybody else is not also getting money but it is a probable conclusion it is a probable conclusion therefore this is an inductive argument now the uh, the interesting part of the about the inductive argument is this that it it might not have a refutable premises but it adds new information therefore this type of essay actually reveals more about the truth than already uh, known by the people it tells us something new rather than the type of essay that i told you about before it there was nothing new in it just a different way to say what already what you already knew that corona virus is this and that and this is happening and therefore we should do this it's already there i just explained it in different words that the deductive argument but in inductive argument you add new information you tell that this is happening this is going on this is these are the cases uh similarly we can write an uh, abductive argument about corona virus as well and then again we start uh from this point that um, uh in 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 the beans example the abductive argument is that these beans are uh white and uh, all of the all of the beans in the bag are white so these beans must be from this bag because these are white but it's not it's not a proof that they are right we are just guessing that since they are white and the bag has white beans therefore these beans must be have been taken from this bag so it's like saying that um the corona virus uh was originated in china in wuhan but there were uh, american soldiers who visited wuhan at the same time and they were also affected by this virus hence the virus was actually started by the american soldiers that a theory that's a conspiracy theory that people are coming up with along with many other possible theories so the theory was this that this happened and and uh, this is a very abductive argument there is no proof for it uh, but uh, it's a guess it's a guess on the basis of that so in this scenario uh, that the beans are white means uh, the soldiers were there in time it's an observable thing the beans are white observable fact known a case 
and all of the beans in the bag are white, which means the virus originated in China. And then the guess that the link between the is that the virus originated from the soldier, which means these beans must have been taken from this bag. So we we understand that these that you have must have read all these three kinds of uh, articles and blogs. One that's talking about um, one that is talking about Amrita, uh, are you saying something? If you are not, please. Okay, so if you have read these two types of articles, you you will know that one of them is the deductive type, the other is the inductive type, and the third one is the abductive type. All of these arguments can be uh, been done, and essays can be written in these ways. So you understand that how we can implement those arguments into the text that we are writing. Same. Uh, thing with every kind of text that you write. If, if you are writing in uh, in an exam, if you are writing uh, it, uh, uh, if you are writing a letter, if you are writing a memo, if you are writing a blog about something, or in a simple email to your friend, it can be anything, and you can use these arguments to make your case. That is how you should do it. So um, I'll ask you to uh, to do to to come up with an assignment using this these things that would not be able to discuss. If there is any question in this, then um, uh, we can ask now, or we can move ahead and go dig deeper. Actually, we have to go deeper in this in this topic. So, abductive, abductive, the argument is. Can you explain this again? The objective जो है वो probability पे depend कर रहा है या फिर facts पे या both पे? Both. Actually, it is a guess that these things happened in this way. Now look at the structure of the argument. The structure says that these beans are white. You have some beans in your hand. These are white. You have a bag in which there the beans. Uh, in all the beans in a bag are white, and you have some beans in your hand that are white. So you say that these beans must have come from this bag. Must have come from these. Uh, this is a typical uh, structure of an in, of an abductive argument, in which you say that uh, that the must have come from, must have happened by, like this, may have happened, might have happened like. So these examples uh, tell us that the abductive arguments are 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 actually educated guesses of how things might have happened, and uh, they are only true just like uh, induction. Uh, uh, it is it is there, but uh, uh, it it has a probability of happening. It has a probability. It might be so that if we actually use the, you know, the Sherlock method to use the abductive argument, then we can prove something. What Sherlock says that uh, you eliminate all the impossible things until you are left with only one possible explanation, and no matter. <coughs> <coughs> No matter how hard it is, how uh, impossible, uh, how improbable it might seem, it must be the truth. So um, uh, actually, Sherlock is using the uh, abductive uh, reasoning all the time. So, uh, for example, if I say that. Um, uh, uh, let's take an example. Um, there is a riddle. Uh, let me ask that riddle. 
there is a person who was found hanging from um, a fan who died who committed suicide and uh, he was found hanging from the rope uh, from a fan in a room and that room was uh, did not have any windows did not have any exits or entries rather than uh, just one door for that exit and uh, entry and door that door was locked from inside so there is actually no way to for any other person to get there so this first this uh, uh, person is is uh, found hanging from that door and this person has been hanging there for a week so he is at least a week after he is found uh, dead hanging from that rope and then um, uh, the question is there, and there is no furniture in the room there is absolutely nothing in the room except this this person so the question is how did that person reach that top of the fan and hang him to how did that happen any guesses can you guess how sir so inductive ho sakta hai ye balance of probability ke shayad kisi ne murder kiya ho uska because no sunny they found to say matlab kaise chale ho but there was no but there it was locked from inside if it was murder then how did that person lock the door from inside we need to ask it from sherlock oh, uh, you are the sherlock here they can abduct and get anybody else any other sherlock in the room hello there are about 20 people here at least this is supposed to be an interactive session so please interact hello mohammad bas sir you think something no sir i'm not saying anything sir okay anybody else no either you are all thinking or you are not here you just logged in and then you went away from me just to show that you logged in there is no attendance happening right now thinking okay you have time to think i will give you some time you think sherlock then think like sherlock what is the possibility you 
you're not it's not something that you can remember therefore you don't need the mind palace mind palace has a database of things that you remember about somebody but you don't even know you're sitting in your room you don't you, you've not gone to that place more of a hercule fire or situation anybody hello let me ask this are they really here nawab ali are you here tumne kul so are you here sunaiya are you here so when you answer you were what blackmail to do what that's not the point why uh, why he killed himself uh the point is how how can a person commits suicide by not having any furniture in the room how did he get to the top and tie the rope and then and then this and, uh, and then hang himself and before that he lost the yeah sir yeah uh usko maarne se pehle people जो लोग हैं वो अंदर आए होंगे ओके एंड दे डू एवरीथिंग दे ब्लैक मेल हिम और सारी पॉसिबिलिटीज बना के रख दी शहर के रोक हैंग कर दी और सब कुछ हैंग करके रख दिया ओके एंड दे लेफ्ट आफ्टर दैट उसने अपने आप को अंदर लॉक करके ही हैंग बट द पॉइंट इज नो फर्नीचर या Uh, the, the, what happened before that? After he locked the room, then there was no there. There is uh, no furniture there. Then how did he go up? That's the point. How did he go up? There is no ladder. There is no nothing in the room. an empty room completely empty so he was killed then how did that killer go out with by uh, while locking the room from inside no window no window maybe is tall yes. jump and tall then he is cannot jump and tie the rope while jumping the rope is he to me bol raha hu sir the rope is tied up uske baad the all the people left the room and he locked him inside and jump and catch the rope uh
the question is how did he stand on something while there was nothing there so you have to think in terms of this that can there be something that was there when he stood there but it's not there anymore it disappeared can there be something like that that can disappear even though we don't know if, if it was there we can just make a, a guess that this might have been the possibility that's called abduction might have been the possibility and if there is nothing else that's possible then it must be the truth however unlikely must be the truth Should I tell you guys? Are you really thinking yet? He looks like a bar. He looks like the old man. No bar, sir. Not me. Can't do it. Who will do it? You know it. Who will do it? The answer is no. This guy. Who will? Who will do it? He was killed. He was. He died seven days ago. Okay. Let me tell you. Think in this situation that if there is nothing that that can be there, that there is nothing there, then it must have been something that was there, but it's not there anymore. Now, how can there be something there that is solid? but it's not there after a week can there be something that is solid but then changes to liquid or gas after some time sir i so he actually climbed on top of a block of ice and hung himself then the ice it to water and then the water evaporated so there was no trace of anything that must have been the truth <clears throat> so even though we don't really know how it happened yet we can make an educated guess that this is the only possible thing every other possibility is eliminated if every other possibility is eliminated then we are only left with one conclusion and that must be the truth that is how we think abductively give abductively okay so uh you get the idea that this this how this works okay so uh let me move forward to another part of this a uh, whole thing of making a case or writing an essay if you are doing that then we also have, if you are writing particularly uh, an article a research article or uh, a technical article uh, we need to have our uh, a fact straight we need to have a strong argument a strong a sound argument or a cogent argument so uh um, if if we are trying to make cogent or sound arguments then we need to understand that we have to use our data wisely we have to use our information correctly so there are uh, four things that we need to consider when we are using any information the first thing is that we need to have reliable information reliability of the data that we are using reliability means consistency reliability means uh that uh, whatever you are saying is consistent with one another for example i say uh, the most 
affected uh, uh, country by coronavirus is USA. Now I can say that, but then the death in the death toll, USA is ranked somewhere around seventh or eighth in terms of death toll. So is it the most affected? That's the question. Yes, it is affected by the numbers of uh, disease, the confirmed cases. But according to the death toll, it is far behind, uh, behind Italy and France and Spain and China, of course. So uh, the question is that, is this a, a, a good argument that we are saying it is the most impact, impacted or it is most affected? So if we are saying that, then it means that we have to actually use some reliable information. Reliable means consistent with what we are saying. So if we say that it is affected most as the num according to the number of confirmed cases, then according to this this reference to this website or the WHO or whatever, these are the confirmed cases. These are more than the uh, the rest of the world. Therefore, it is the most effective. So we have to first specify how we are using the information, and that is called reliability. The consistency in our argument. We have to have consistency. If we are saying something and then we are talking about something else, just so that we are just desperate to prove our point and we have multiple arguments saying against something. Well, how this, this works, how the, uh, the lack of reliability is there, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, for example, if I ask a student why that student was not able to submit the assignment on time. So that student says that um, actually I uh, did not have the Google uh, Classroom uh, ID and therefore I was not able to do it. And I say that, uh, okay, so why didn't you ask for it? You could have asked me or anybody else. And this person says, yes, that's true, I could have asked for it, but uh, actually I uh, had so many things at home to do and therefore I did not get enough time for this. Now what has this person done is that he has changed the argument from not having a Google ID, uh, password to having not having time. So these are two different arguments and they are not aligned with each other. Therefore they are not reliable and hence it makes the argument weak. Instead he could have said that uh, yes I uh, but I could not ask because I was at home and my internet was off. And therefore, I couldn't ask. So, you had your mobile phone, yes, but I did not have credit. Still, these arguments are still aligned with each other because they are on the same line. They are consistent with each other. They are uh, somewhat believable. But not having enough time is not believable and it's certainly not aligned with it. Now, if that student would could have said that I did not have enough time, but how can you not have enough time? You were there. There was some problem at home. There was somebody ill at home. We had to go somewhere. Whatever the argument is after that should have, should be aligned with the first argument. If it is so, then it's reliable, it's consistent. So whatever we are saying should have reliable information, which means the the, uh, the arguments that we are taking, the premises that we are taking up as references from any place should be consistent with each other. Um, for example, if somebody says that um, um, the uh, the um, um, the prime minister has said that uh, we should not have a lockdown 
because that will have a bad impact on the economy or and on the, the people and they will not have enough to uh, feed on and therefore it is the right argument and then they say that uh, uh, the um, this person is following the rules of the the guidelines given by china we are following everything given by china so that's not a reliable argument because it's actually against the first argument because china had a big lockdown so uh, how is this the same argument that you made earlier you can have a different argument in this sense that you can say that in china it was uh possible to have a lockdown because they don't have the daily wage workers in that large quantity large number as we have in pakistan so it was okay for them to have a lockdown but not okay for us now this is a reliable argument but uh, the the other argument is not that we are just following the footsteps of them it's not reliable because it doesn't go with the first argument you understand what i'm saying consistency in the argument so yes please somebody say yes so that i can know you are hearing me sir clear nahi ho raha abhi bhi isliye reliability clear ho gaya ki matlab consistency mein aana chahiye reliable lekin ha kya nahi samajh mein aa raha sir sir ek example de de jo एबडक्टिव इंडक्टिव और डिडक्टिव तीनों को रिलेट कर दे इस तरीके से रिलायबिलिटी जैसे आपने कोरोना वायरस की एग्जाम्पल दी ठीक है कि कोरोना वायरस इज इन्फेक्टेड तो उसके अंदर फिर हमने ये कहा था कि यूएसए जो है वो सबसे मोस्ट इफेक्टिव है फिर हमने फैक्ट के बेसिस के ऊपर डिडक्टिव बना दिया उसको कि ये सारे फैक्ट हैं ये सारे फैक्ट के बोल रहे हैं तो अभी उसी को अगर इंडस्ट्रीज में कन्वर्ट करना हो उसी आर्ग्यूमेंट को यूएसए इज द मोस्ट तो उसको किस तरीके से करेंगे और उसी को डिडक्टिव में भी करना हो तो फिर उसी को एबडक्टिव में भी कर सकते हैं एबडक्टिव में तो इसलिए नहीं कर सकते क्योंकि हमें तो ये बताना है कि वो इम्पैक्टेड है सबसे ज्यादा तो उसको एबडक्टिव में नहीं बता सकते उसको क्योंकि एबडक्टिव तो एक्चुअली ये बताता है कि गेस्ट करता है कि ये हुआ होगा ऐसा हुआ होगा यानी कि हम ये गैस कर सकते हैं ये कह सकते हैं आवर आर्ग्यूमेंट कैन बी दिस दैट दी अमेरिका इज द मोस्ट अफेक्टेड बिकॉज दे डिड नॉट हैव अ लॉकडाउन इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस दे शुड हैव गॉन विद द लॉकडाउन अर्लियर बट दे डिड नॉट गो विद द लॉकडाउन एंड देयर फोर देयर इम्पैक्ट इज ग्रेटर दैन अदर्स If they had if they had implemented the lockdown earlier, it would not have happened. Now this is an abductive argument because it doesn't have any proof, but in a sense educated guess because we see that these numbers are rising and we see that the lockdown was not there. Therefore, these two must be correlated, correlated with each other. But that's not uh, definitely true. It's just an educated guess. so uh, maybe if they had a lockdown it would still would have uh, uh, reached every corner so let's an educated guess but in this in this abductive uh, argument of making this educated guess we can have the inductive argument as well we can say that let's talk about uh, new york and in new york the lockdown did not occur till this day and therefore because of not having a lockdown and because the number of people living in new york are much larger and they are it's it has a much denser population than others dense means that people live closer to each other they live in apartments that are very very close to each other it is almost impossible to avoid each other on the in the corridors in these small spaces as compared to other states that are in which people live uh, many many uh, um, hundreds of yards from each other and the houses are built 
very very much apart so they don't get to interact with people uh, very close in close distances but in new york that happens frequently because there is a full of apartments so it's uh, it's uh, therefore it might be possible that because of that lockdown not having a lockdown in new york this happened so the abductive reasoning based on these arguments is this and these arguments must be aligned with each other if i say that this happened because new york people are uh, uh, are very uh, have less immunity than others so in the, in the, in the in the line of this argument these when i'm stitching these arguments together and i insert this argument in between that if people in new york have less immunity than other states so it will destroy the whole argument structure because it is not a reliable argument anymore it is not aligned with the other premises that i was giving that it was related to lockdown get what i'm saying yes. <clears throat> and abductive argument using uh, reliable uh, data or reliable uh, premises so you see you have given the example of inductive and abductive inductive ke andar isko agar hum karna chahe we say that uh, there is a certain person in uh, in america for example there was this Uh, this news that was coming from Italy that uh, the same family of four of uh, four people died in Italy. Now, Italy, in Italy, there have been deaths of uh, over eleven thousand so far. So, why were they so concerned about four people? Why? Because when we when we say it in this way. that uh, the same family of four the mother and father and two sons all passed away due to corona corona virus it uh, actually makes us uh, sad because no one is left in that family however uh, there might have been that there were 11000 deaths so obviously there were many people killed but because saying that those four people that together also tells us gives us this message that even if one person is infected in one family that person should be quarantined immediately otherwise that person is going to infect everybody that was the message that they were giving in this in the on, on bbc or cnn so that is what that was an inductive way taking a case and then uh, making uh, that case um uh, analogous with uh, uh, the majority of the people out there so taking a case that's inductive get the idea thoda sa confused sir in inductive we always take a case and then we move from that case to a generic conclusion just like these four people who died together there might have been many people there might be many people who are infected and they are in their homes and they are not quarantined and the others in the family are at risk because of that person therefore everybody who is infected should be quarantined and there should be a lockdown the same conclusion is coming from all the corners and coming to the same conclusion again and again but i'm taking an inductive stance versus a deductive stance versus an abductive stance okay sir so the uh, the first part of getting the uh, information is having reliable information which means all your arguments must be having the same uh, uh consistency the same line on the they must be on the same line the next is uh credibility now credibility and reliability are different reliability means the consistency of information and it doesn't talk anything about the 
source of information, how you got this information. You might say that uh, I've heard, I've read three different newspapers uh, that say that uh, the, <clears throat> the uh, death toll in, um, uh, yeah, or the death rate in Punjab is higher than the death rate in Sin. So when we find out what newspapers they are, we find out that one is uh, uh, Awam and the other is Daily uh, News, some Asim and or Daily Pakistan or whatever. And and you say that all of these newspapers are not credible. If this was printed in Dawn or if this was printed in Jung or this was printed in Express Tribune, then we could have. Uh, uh, considered that this might be true. But because all of these are n not credible, therefore this argument is weak. Even though they are reliable, it means all of them are saying the same thing. But they are not credible. Credible means that the, in the information source has a good repute. People consider it as giving the right kind of information. For example, right now the best way to find out what coronavirus is and how it is really impacting or what we should do, the best uh, source of information is WHO, the World Health Organization. You cannot actually rely on anybody else to give you the right information except WHO. That's why we need to uh, follow that instead of following people who are, who many of, of them are, have actually uh, said that uh, coronavirus can um, uh, survive in the air for nine hours. One rumor was there and then WHO said that no, no, it's not true. So these kinds of rumors are there and then we don't, um, uh, have to believe them because they are not credible. So whenever we are taking any argument, we have to use credible sources. The same thing happens in uh, in research writing. When we are writing a research paper or uh, a dissertation, an MS thesis or a PhD thesis, the references that we are giving, they carry a big weightage. Which means that if we are saying that uh, we have taken this reference from a blog that somebody wrote in uh, in uh, uh, just a blog uh, anywhere in an independent website, so that the opinion of that person will not matter in your research because that is a is not a credible source. Rather than that, you say that I've taken this from uh, a reputed research journal and uh, by a reputed publisher. For example, the first thing that they uh, teach you in writing uh, in research articles is the is the famous publishers. The so famous publishers are Emerald and Sage and uh, Scopus. Scopus is a collective of these and uh, Springer and uh, all of these are, these are different publishers that have many, many journals that they publish. So if you go to Emerald and you search for an article and then you refer to that article in your argument, then that will carry some weight in your argument because it is reputed as a good publisher. Therefore, the things that are there in, uh, in in that argument are credible. They can be Sir? considered credible. Yes. Sir, relay, reliability can be you said ki consistency on data. Hmm. So, data is authentic. Hi hoga na, sir? Even Matab if the data is authentic, even if the data is authentic, the source is not credible, then it, it's not a good idea to make a reference to it. For example, I say that I want to know the uh, people impacted by coronavirus. 
so i go to the website and i check uh, there is a website uh, uh, any uh, website that i see and it is a personal website it is uh, shahidinight.com and in shahidinight.com you find a blog that says that today the debt fall was uh, 33000 as the cumulative debt fall was 33000 and you refer to that blog and you say that it is written in this blog that this was 33000 it might be true absolutely true. but because the source is not credible your argument is weak instead you should search for the same information in credible sources you should go to who you should go to worldometer which is a credible source of information and search for these things if you watch worldometer you will find the uh, the absolute update of information about the debt fall or anything so sir reliability jo hai wo khali ek idea deta hai ek argument ka us consistency ke sath bas reliability whatever you are saying whatever arguments you have selected all of them are consistent with each other you are saying the same thing got it got it got it you are not saying different things you are not saying that uh, um, if i say corona virus you should stay away from people because the, the corona virus is an infectious disease and then i say you should always stay away from people because um, it's uh, the corona virus stays in the air somehow i have shifted from my argument the argument was not good if i say the um, because actually what happens you, you can see if you are making an argument and you are taking a particular um uh, premise as uh, for your conclusion and then you take another premise which is not related actually you ruin the validity of the argument because either this argument is uh, is reaching to that conclusion or the other premise is reaching to that conclusion both cannot uh, uh, if they are not aligned with each other both cannot coincide with the same conclusion and that's why it ruins the validity so even though they might be true but they are not since they are not consistent uh, it will ruin the validity of the argument therefore we have to be uh, have to have reliable uh information which means consistent okay sir got it and then uh we have the credible sources the, the sources should be credible they should be have a good repute people should be uh, uh comfortable that this information that you have taken is from the right source the third is uh significant which means is it significant for significant means uh your premise or whatever information you are using is actually related to your argument or not for example if i say that uh, this is covid 19 but this is not the first uh, uh, corona virus why Uh, there have been at least two corona viruses before that which was the sars and the mers the um, middle eastern respiratory syndrome and that uh, middle eastern respiratory syndrome has had a death uh, mortality rate of about 34% so i say that corona virus is very deadly and we should be very worried about it because uh, in uh, 2012 uh, since 2012 it has killed about uh, 2700 people and um, and the death rate is about 34% all of this is true all of this is true but it's not related to what this corona virus is this is not uh, covid 19 that we are talking about so It's significant, but it's not related to what we're talking about. It won't make any sense. 
it's a very typical example of this is in uh, uh, in in the political or the religious argument that we make. When we are making a political argument, we say that uh, uh, this person has not done anything. This this leader was not good for us because this leader actually made these uh, uh, these mistakes. For example, we say that uh, the, the, the the previous government was not good because they spent more on roads. Instead, they should have made hospitals. So, uh, they also made hospitals. So, they also made roads. This is not the point. How is this relevant to the topic that we are talking about right now? Or we say that the, the previous government was corrupt. How is that relevant to the information right now? So, if we are not making a relevant argument, we are talking about something else. We are talking about even if it is true, but it's not related, it, it means it's not significant to what we are saying. It doesn't have any significance in our case. Uh, you see that uh, whenever if you see any movie or drama, and you see a courtroom and there are people talking and they are saying that uh, this um, there is there is a question um, and then the other uh, lawyer says that uh, this question is not related to this case so therefore this question should not be asked we, we see that this is happening in the courtroom all the time and the judge says that if it is relevant, then we can go ahead and if not, then this question cannot be asked because it is not significant to the topic. But sometimes lawyers do that. They, they deliberately try to do that. For example, if I say that uh, there is a certain person who is... Um, uh, uh, who... who who says that uh, uh, there is a certain um, uh, lady that had, uh, that was um, troubled by some people on the street, and um, and uh, she takes them to court that they have been misbehaving with me, or they did some kind of assault. And then the lawyer on the other side says that uh, actually um, I would like to ask if you have any, have had any uh, uh, affairs with people in your life. And the people, actually what the lawyer is trying to do, and in situations like this, the lawyer is trying to distract the people from the main threat of the problem to another thing. He is trying to say that this person is might be uh, a, a person of a lot of good character, therefore this person should not be sympathized with. And, but that's not significant to the case. So, uh, this is uh, something that you need to understand, significant to the topic, if it's not significant, then uh, it it will not have a good weightage. The last significance of reliability is that one is one. No, no. Significant means you are talking about something else, which means which is not related to the topic. Okay. If I have a full argument that is consistent with itself, but it's not related to what I'm saying. Every argument is consistent with itself. I talk about MERS, I talk about its death toll, I talk about it, how it happened, how it impacted everybody. Everything is synchronous with each other. But then actually I had to make a case about COVID-19, not of the other coronavirus. So it won't be significant. Okay. So you got it. So... Reliability means consistent with each other. Credibility means the source is right. You can depend on it. 
and the third is significant it is important for the topic that we are talking about and the last is having validity of information is the information valid or not for example if i say uh, today that the people who have died from corona virus is 33000 and then my sentence is done finished if you listen to this in two days time then you will say no that's not true it's it's over 37000 so about 39000 right now so that information will not be uh, then i will be deemed an uh, uh, source that is not credible which is not giving the right information instead i should say that uh, as on uh, 29 march the uh, people who had died or the 30th march the people who had died from corona virus was 33000 So if it's not valid, then it doesn't matter. Then it it useless. Validity you can understand validity in this sense. Uh, if you have, uh, if you go to the doctor and the doctor asks you to take a blood uh, report, that take a report of your blood. You go to uh, you go to the lab and give your blood, and then you get a blood report. And you go to the doctor and show him or her the report. Can you keep that report with you? In about uh, uh, one year's time, you again go to the doctor for something, and that doctor again asks you to take a blood report. What will you do? You will say that, oh, I already have a blood report from one year back. Why spend on another blood report? Let's give that that report. Will it work? No. No, why not? Because it's not valid now. It's not valid anymore. Why? Because your blood has changed in the last one year. If things are changing, then your previous information about something is not valid anymore. If something is not changing, for example, if I say that there is Uh, um an article on mount everest and in that art article was written in 1970 and it says that the height of mount everest is this and i refer to it so it's fine because the height of mount everest has not changed in 1970 it's still valid because the height is not changing but the uh the variables that are changing all the time need to be valid which means we need to refer to the latest information that we have rather than uh, referring to an old information that has changed you get what i'm saying the validity is important when the variable that we are considering is changing and for that we have to have the valid information which means it should be updated information taken from a credible source that's called valid information not the argument the validity of argument is another thing and valid information is another thing we get it सर वैलिडिटी में आपने एक एक्सरसाइज भी डाली थी क्लासरूम पर आई डोंट रिमेम्बर व्हाट वाज इट कुछ केसेस दिए थे सम सेंटेंसेस वर देयर एंड यू हैव टू रिमाइंड दैट दैट वेदर देयर वैलिड और नॉट वैलिडिटी आर्गुमेंट वैलिडिटी इज डिफरेंट इंफॉर्मेशन वैलिडिटी इज अनदर थिंग इंफॉर्मेशन वैलिडिटी मींस इज द इंफॉर्मेशन अपडेटेड to the latest point or not yes i got it so if it is not updated then you need to search for the most updated information that increases the validity of your point that is why when we are talking about research writing and we are writing a research paper then it is always asked us 
to refer to those uh, research uh, articles, research papers that have been published in the last three or five years. Rather than referring to an article that was published in 90s, we refer to an article, it is better to refer to an article that has been published in 2017. So that increases the validity of the information and therefore the argument is stronger. So our argument is stronger and more cogent when we follow these four things. We have reliable information, the sources are credible, the validity of the information is there, we look for the latest uh, possible information for the things that are changing and uh, we have uh, um, the, the, all of this is significant, significant to our argument. We are not talking about something else, but we are, uh, we are using them, you can say the pertinent argument for premises for our argument. That's how we use it. So, if you have understood, that's our lecture for today. I'll give you some assignments and maybe a quiz on the same topic that we discussed today so that everybody can be here. Since everybody is, a lot of people are here, I'll give the quiz on this. Even if you haven't attended this, you can still view this video. I'll put it on YouTube in about an hour's time. This takes some time to uh, render and then I'll give it to uh, you on YouTube. So you just, if you, if, even if you don't, uh, then get these uh, examples immediately, you can watch them again. Anything you want to ask? Which exercise? Tell to practice exercise on that addition, validity of each of an argument. Hmm. Which must have a confusion over here. It's my confusion for me. Okay. Uh, what I'll do is that I'll, um, the examples, I, I, I've given you some uh, links to the list, right? I'll solve them yes. and uh, put those uh, with, with the screenshot. I'll record those while solving them and then I'll send them on YouTube as well. So are the answers are given? But here is the main menu. Here is the answer. I'll do the process. Okay, so on the screen, so that you can see it, how I'm doing it, and then we can uh, see it on YouTube. Okay, sir. Quiz will be uh, any time between uh, today and Friday. I'll put it on uh, Google Classroom once this video is up. Then I'll put it on Google Classroom and the quiz will be related to this session today. If you must be getting these, uh, whatever, whenever I'm updating something on Google Classroom, you will get it, right? You'll know about the quiz as well. Okay. So, I've, I've done that. I've put the uh, dilemma topic, the, the dilemma lecture on uh, YouTube. If you haven't seen that, go, go and see that. Sir, just you have a syllogism, you have a lot of links, so you have to link the dilemma topic. Okay, I'll do that. Fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, so I'll see you guys uh, next Tuesday. There will be some physical classes after the lockdown. Whenever it is over, we will have some physical classes. So don't worry, we will get a chance to revise everything that you study. Yes, there will be classes. That's for near conditions, sir. No, we will have classes. Even if it goes till July, even then we will have class. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, 15 to 15 days ka bol rahe hain, lockdown. Haan. Let's see. Even, we are actually, uh, uh, the university has planned, uh, even if it's, uh, the things that the university is closed till 30th May even, even then we have planned for ahead. So don't worry about that. Okay, sir. So, then, uh, that's it for now. Allah Hafiz.